Beautiful landscapes on their own don't make for a good MMO. I mean, it helps, but when those beautiful landscapes are tightly woven with interesting game mechanics, well, now we're talking. In March's Pantheon Rise of the Fallen development stream, there were four major updates that changed the look and the feel of the world. Biomes, water system, day-night cycle, and weather. And none of these were in the game as of January, so that's a pretty quick turnaround time. If you want to follow along with all the progress on the milestones toward Alpha 1, check out the Alpha Tracker on libraryofpantheon.com. One of the many unique things about following an open development process like this is that we can see parts of the world transform right in front of us. Those who have been following Pantheon for at least the past couple years will be familiar with the term gray box. For those of you that don't know, gray boxing is quote, a level design practice where you build a rough block out version of your level using blocks, usually gray boxes, so that you can iterate and test the layout as soon as possible, end quote. I think we can all agree that gameplay is more important than graphical fidelity, so you shouldn't, as a developer, spend time and money making your own graphics before testing the core gameplay. Although if your game is almost entirely crowdfunded like Pantheon, audiences might not be as interested if everything they see is grey. From 2014 to 2019, Vision Realms was building Pantheon's game world primarily using pre-made art assets they had purchased from the Unity store to save money on their crowdfunded budget while also being able to present graphics that were attractive in order to raise more funding. And during that time, the zone of Thronefast looked like this. Looks pretty nice, right? Well, the problem is that it wasn't sustainable. From creative director Chris Joppa Perkins, quote, we believed that was the best way to depict what Pantheon would look like while giving us the ability to prototype gameplay. And it's not totally uncommon, though greyboxing is the true industry standard when you have a typically closed development process. But when the majority of your game world is built using a smattering of different art assets from different authors with different rendering pipelines, poly budgets, art styles, etc., you end up with a world that cannot be woven together system-wise to be a performant game. You also severely limit your ability to design zones freely because you are working with a rigid terrain versus building what you actually want and need." End quote. Now keep in mind, Unity assets in and of themselves aren't bad, it's the heavy reliance on them that can cause problems. Using some pre-made assets is pretty common in the game industry as a whole. Do you really expect every development team to handcraft every single one of their own bookcases or torches that most people will never even look twice at? No, they'll often purchase a cheap license to use an asset that somebody else has already made. So you can expect some of that in Pantheon as well we may still continue using them and may even launch Pantheon with some of those still intact. The key is, do they fit? Do they work? Um, I'll, an example is um, the Halnir Cave modules. Those cave modules are a Unity asset, um, but they happen to work really, really well as caves. And we've also done a ton of you know, custom stuff with them, with the textures, the materials, the lighting, um, how we've you know, used the layout and used some of our own assets in conjunction with, it, with those to create looks and contours and aspects of those areas that you wouldn't find um, just using assets on the store. There's nothing wrong to us with utilizing Unity assets where it makes sense. The problem is when you start leaning too heavily on Unity assets such that your bespoke pieces and your very unique, you know, identity carrying pieces aren't that. They're, they are also Unity store assets. That's when you start running into an issue. And that's where we're you know, going to be making sure that we have, you know, the emblematic pieces and all the pieces that we need to make sure Pantheon is its own. And, but there's a lot of art that MMOs need, and wherever we can find you know, sources of that, especially if you're talking more mundane items in the world, um, I don't think anyone should care, in my opinion, that uh, we're going to, they're going to see a crate and say, well, that's not a VR crate, so... I'm, <laughs> I challenge people to figure that out, actually. That would be the more best. Sure. Um, <laughs> you have to have a high enough perception skill. <laughs> yeah. This crate seems odd. <laughs> right. <laughs> this crate seems out of place. This, the, you, you perceive a, a link to a website. Um, the other question being about like crowd... or. Um, Outsourcing and outsourcing is a really powerful vehicle that we have at our in our arsenal as well. Um, it's something that needs to be managed very carefully. It's something that uh, can also at the same time be a huge, huge boon to getting you know the large amounts of art uh, finished that that we need. Um, we're not planning on all of our art being outsourced. Obviously, we need that you know core team, internal team driving the identity and the visuals of the game. Um, but there's a lot of additional art that, with the right kind of oversight and leadership, um, we can utilize some outsourcing options to really, really great effect. So, uh, the, the answer to the question. Um, 
by alpha, we we will not have any gray box um, by the time alpha launches. But uh, yeah, you could still see some Unity assets here and there that we've deemed fit enough with the art style of the game and work well enough um, for our purposes. So starting in 2020, Vision Realms revisited the zones that weren't working with Unity assets and rebuilt them in a gray box state, at which point Throne Fast looked like this. Definitely not as fun to look at, but at least the game ran better and was more customizable. It was a more solid foundation that could be built on. Fast forward to today, and Throne Fast looks like this. Now, does it look 100% done? Of course not. But when compared to the gray box state it was in even last year, it's pretty striking how quickly this came together. Vision Realms is using a program called Gaia to take that gray box terrain data and procedurally generate these biomes onto it. Just to clarify, the content isn't completely procedurally generated like it is in some games such as Minecraft or No Man's Sky. The shape of the world here and the NPCs and the landmarks in it are all hand placed. The devs are just using procedural generation to fill in the gaps with things like grass, plants, rocks, erosion, trees, etc. Which are fairly mundane on their own, but make the world look a lot more real and alive especially since things like grass and plants react when your character moves through them. Naturally, the world builders have control over the parameters of how these details are generated. For example, they've assigned beech trees to only be able to appear on the valley floor in Thronefast, but if you go up into the mountains with higher elevation, you'll only see pine trees, until it reaches a certain elevation where no trees can grow at all. And of course, they can move things around from there if they want, but obviously it saves a lot of time from having to place each one individually. Keep in mind, Thronefast is just one area like this. Gaia is being used throughout the world, not just on land, but also underwater. Water is a big part of exploration in Pantheon. Similarly to how you'll have to use your climbing skill to reach content above you, you'll also have to use your swimming skill to reach content below you. Although, in many ways, swimming will feel even more different than climbing. The approach that we're taking to water is um, much more of a um, kind of a survival approach, in a sense, in that we're not looking to just mimic overland combat encounters underwater, where it's really the exact same, but you're just swimming around. You know, we want, we want the water to be like an entirely different frontier, and the kind of considerations you have to make going into the water, especially if you're planning on going very far out or very deep, uh, are unique and very different than you would on land. Um, the kind of dangers, the kind of risks, uh, you know, obviously some, some specific climates in view there with the anaerobic and the pressure, um, but also the visibility and things like that. But uh, we want water to be just a hauntingly beautiful and enticing yet um, scary and and kind of something that you know can give a sense of trepidation as well. Um, very exploration heavy and uh, very excited about it. As you can see, water is now in game. It reacts to the lighting system in realistic ways, with deeper water being darker and more blurry. One of their next development objectives is to implement the swimming system, which will of course allow testers to actually experience firsthand how water impacts gameplay and make it more than just something pretty to look at. But speaking of being more than just something pretty to look at, the day-night cycle is also now in game. And as you would expect from a game that puts such an emphasis on immersion, the world of Terminus changes at night. Not only do the crickets come out and it gets harder to see, but certain NPCs only spawn at night, or behave differently at night, including some merchants closing up shop. Certain perception pings are only available at certain times of day, and certain harvestable resources are only available at certain times of day. The content doesn't just look different, it is different. While they haven't specified exactly how long an in-game day is, they did say it definitely won't correspond to a 24-hour real-world day. And that's probably for the better, because if you can only play at certain times each real day, you'd only get to experience one part of Pantheon's in-game day. And because the content significantly changes depending on the time of in-game day, that would just be unfair. 
On top of days and nights, Pantheon also has its own calendar which tracks in-game weeks, months, and years. Although I'm still recovering from daylight savings time so let's hope they don't put that stupid idea into the game. But a good idea that they have put into the game, however, is seasons. And if you pay close attention, you'll notice that the sun and the two moons, Hana and Lauta, are in different positions depending on the time of in-game year. And of course, with different seasons comes different weather, which is the last big system added to Pantheon recently. In most MMORPGs, you occasionally get the visual of rain or snow outside, which provides a nice ambiance but it usually doesn't change the way you think about gameplay. In Pantheon, however, weather is meaningful. Just as a few real examples, Druid's abilities change depending on the weather, and certain harvestable resources might only be available after rainfall. Out in a lightning storm, well, you might want to think twice about standing at the top of an exposed hill in a full suit of wet metal armor, because weather also plays in to the status system. Well, uh, if you think of rain, uh, you might become drenched. Just as a refresher, in Pantheon, certain player and NPC abilities, or in this case weather, can apply a temporary status to their target. These statuses are displayed on your screen kind of like a debuff, but they don't do anything on their own. Only when other abilities are used on a target with a particular status will you see some synergistic effects. And this is already in game, you can see it at work in the recent gameplay streams. Drenched is a status that increases electrical damage on targets that have it, so that's something you'll have to take into account if you or your target has been out in the rain for too long. Another example would be the Windswept status. There are class abilities like the Shaman's Headwinds that can apply the status on command, but also really windy weather. Either way, that wind will oxygenate and amplify the damage of fire. So you can start to see how weather, especially when combined with the status system, really forces you to pay attention in and out of combat and think in ways you wouldn't normally in an MMO. But really, all four of these new systems, biomes, water, day, night, and weather, are big steps toward making one of Pantheon's oldest tenets a reality. Player versus environment should involve more than NPCs. If you don't want to be out of the loop about Pantheon's development moving forward, hit the subscribe button now because this channel is dedicated to following it closely. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll know that I never ask you to donate to Pantheon's crowdfunded development. I know everybody has their own financial situations and levels of risk tolerance, so what you do with your money is up to you. However, if you do make that decision to pledge or upgrade your pledge, and my videos have in any way informed your decision, I'd really appreciate it if you'd list me as a referral when you get your post pledge survey. My account is bazgrimtv at gmail.com, and that just helps me to know that I'm covering the things that you want to know about. So until the next video, stay curious and adventure on.